It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a brushless motor control design. Okay, maybe brushless motor control isn't quite up to electronic engineering superhero status just yet, but it's getting there. With quieter motor operation, improved efficiency, and big savings on the power front, brushless motor design is becoming more and more popular these days. But it's not exactly easy. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, making sure your motor control design is efficient and ready for prime time can be a complicated process. But never fear, we're here to help. My guest today is Alan Lee from Toshiba. Alan and I are digging into all things brushless motor control today, including the basics of brushless motor control, more advanced variables, including lead angle control and intelligent phase control, and most importantly, how you can simplify your next brushless motor control design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Toshiba. Hi, Alan. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad to be here. So, Alan, we're talking about how to simplify brushless motor controls today. But before we get started, what will we be covering today? I want to talk about, just give you a very brief introduction, and then also talk about overview about brushless motor controls. And from that, I want to break it down and to talk about some basic brushless motor control. And at the end, I want to close it with some more advanced control information to share with people here. Great. Now, Alan, I'm not sure I know about Toshiba in terms of motor control. What do you guys bring to this arena? For Toshiba Semiconductor Division, we actually have been designing motor control semiconductors for close to 40 years. So we have quite a bit of experience. We have a huge portfolio that uh, encompasses fully integrated motor driver for simple motion applications to all the way to a very advanced motor control specific MCU for flexibility, high power, critical missions uh, applications. And then motor control, for many people who are not aware in this space, spinning a motor is one thing, but making motor efficient is a different thing. And with that, it requires you know, a lot of new techniques. And therefore, we continue to invest and bring in new technologies into the motor control space. We have a very strong discrete group that has hundreds of you know, MOSFETs and IGBT that really augment the motor control that they require different sizes of discrete components to complete the motor control. And last but not least, technical support is very important. And we have pretty strong technical support. We have a lot of development boards. We have reference designs. We even have the video tutorials. And some of the motor driver, we even have piece by model to really facilitate for the designers. Okay, so Alan, it seems that brushless motor control is a hot topic these days. But why do you think that is? Yes, I believe so as well. Due to the growing need of energy efficiency, people also want to have very quiet operation of the motor and also very reliable operation of the motor. Brushless motors fit that uh, very well. And therefore, we are seeing a lot more people are moving to the brushless motors, not to mention the cost is getting coming down quite a bit that uh, it's getting more affordable these days for people to consider that. To improve a motor drive efficiency for brushless motor, complicated design process generally required. Fortunately, Toshiba offer motor drive control solutions that solve these challenges. So Alan, can we take a little closer look at what exactly this looks like? Yes, Toshiba offers over 250 motor control IC products in a portfolio, just because there are different types of requirements in terms of the power, in terms of the flexibility. And... Um, with that, you know, of course, most of the people would like to pick the simplest and the lowest cost solution. So for simple motion and moderate power, typically less than 100 watt brushless motor applications, it is simpler to use just off the shelf motor control driver. So which most of them integrate the motor control logic, the gate driver and a MOSFET in a single chip as shown in the first row, which is the, the simplest solution as if it is a black box, really simplify the task for the designers, which is very popular of this kind of devices. But there are also some situations that customers have to have, you know, drive more high power motors. And therefore, we also offer just a pre-driver option of that 
we also have customer only need to have the motor control logic, but then to take care of the external gate driver and the MOSFETs. This first group of three, these products call you know, motor control driver MCD. And then for high power, you need a lot of flexibility, maybe dealing with very complex motion control as well as mission critical applications. Typically, it requires you know, motor control specific MCU to take care of that. And Toshiba products in this group is called Vector Engine MCU, which I will talk about that a little bit in this presentation. Okay, so Alan, what kind of applications do you see brushless motor control playing a big part in these days? Actually, there are getting more and more applications that require brushless motor, mainly for the efficiency relative to brush motors, which is not as efficient as brushless motor. That's one of the main reasons. There are also a lot more simple motion application does not require too much of a power and is also cost sensitive. And with that, like I mentioned, the off the shelf motor control driver MCD products are well suited for some of these applications. For example, a robotic cleaner, the vacuum portion of it, and even a CPAP machine, and there's a lot of fan application. And there's also other applications that are, you know, motor. It's a very critical mission, for example, power tools, air conditioners, and pump, et cetera, et cetera. These are non emission critical. They also require relatively higher power. It needs the flexibility. And therefore, a motor control MCU is usually considered in this type of applications instead. And Toshiba has products to cover just about most of these applications. So, Alan, before we get into the finer details of brushless motor control, Can you set the stage for us? What does the general ecosystem of motors look like? There are actually many different types of motors. And I hear, I just want to classify into just two types, AC motors and the DC motors. Motors to which alternating current is applied are called AC motors and are further classified into induction and synchronous motors according to the difference in the rotating principle. As you can see on the upper right here, AC motors are very easy to control. They are cheap, maintenance-free, but there's no easy way to regulate the supply voltage and the frequency to control the motors unless you apply an inverter control. Then it complicated designs. And it's also very difficult to determine the rotor position. So meaning it is good for general purpose application. And then motors to which the direct current is applied are called DC motors, which include brushed, brushless, and stepping motors. In fact, both brushed and brushless motors can be used in similar applications with the cost performance requirements determine the final choice. As you can also see in the brushless motor here, relative to the AC motors, brushless DC motor has less power consumption and therefore its form factor can be smaller and yet have a equivalent power density relative to the AC motor, which is a huge advantage of that. And as I mentioned earlier also, the cost is coming down you know, to an affordable level for brushless motor these days. There's only one caveat. It requires some efforts to really control a brushless motor to its optimum. But then brushless motor does actually have a lot of subcategory. It can get confusing. So I'll try to explain a little bit, you know, further in this presentation, but I wouldn't cover everything. I'll talk about uh, a few important ones here. Great. So, Alan, what does a brushless motor look like? What kind of components are we really talking about here? So a brushless motor uses an inverted circuit, as shown on the upper left here, to switch the direction and the magnitude of the electric current applied to the coils on the stator. And that effectively change the corresponding magnetic force on the stators. And such stators, electromagnetic forces, cause the push or pull actions upon on the rotor, which is shown in the middle, which is a permanent magnet rotor. And if we synchronize the driving from this inverter correctly, and this rotor will rotate. And that's the basics of a brushless motor, how it works. Okay, so I would imagine that we could have a lot of different options when it comes to complexity here. Yes, I would say this is a important slide and very interesting slide because I try to illustrate the different brushless motor control topologies and the confusions. So first of all, the brushless motor can be driven, you know, with different control topologies. There are more than what I show here, but I just generalize them into four. 
And generally, the decision is driven by the complexity, the cost, and the performance requirements. So there are two key factors you know, in the control. And the first one is the type of signal used to drive the motor current in either a square wave or a sine wave. The second one is whether or not there are discrete sensors used to detect the rotor positions. The one with the sensors usually are hall sensors embedded into the motor. The one without a sensor, we usually call it sensorless. So back to the square wave or the sine wave drive, the square wave drive generate more harmonics because of the current waveform as shown on the figure two here. Also, square wave drive system is easy, but the power consumption is higher and the noise is also higher as shown in the figure three. Although the sine wave drive is more complicated, it reduces power consumption and noise. Sine wave control minimizes the harmonics associated with audible noise and EMI, as shown in the figure two again here. Regarding the rotor position, sensor-based motor detects the rotor position based on the voltage measured directly from the hall sensors, which is more common method. And sensorless motor detects the rotor position differently, and they detect the rotor position based on the back EMF as a simplest approach. On the other hand, for more advanced approach, the rotor position can be extracted from the measurements directly from the motor currents, but it is more challenging and requires sophisticated algorithm to process the information, which is actually showing on the top in this triangle here. And I would like to spend time discussing the top three you know, systems and the rest of the presentation here. Okay, great. So what about the control system? Can we look at that aspect a little deeper? Yeah, we may look a bit more at some of the terms and components in motor control system. Since it is a control system, there must be something doing the control. This can be an MCU where the control software is running or state machines that react to the various inputs. The motor control circuit will generate the control signals, typically in the form of pulse width modulated signals, which are fed to the gate driver, which then drive the inverter, the output stage, to drive the motor. The inverter consists of a set of half bridges, which are used to switch a DC supply, often of a much higher voltage than the MCU. To create a three switching signals to drive the three phases of the motor, these inverters are commonly made up of N-channel MOSFETs. And for proper brushless motor control, rotor position feedback from the motor is required. Motor position is required to ensure the correct timing of the voltage applied to the motor. In the brushless motor, the rotor position must be determined with sensors or through some sensorless position detection mechanisms. All right, Alan, so what about the inverter? Can you explain that part a bit more? Sure. So the inverter is an important building block for brushless motor control. The inverter is one of the power converters using semiconductors. So when a motor is simply controlled by an on-off circuit, as shown on the upper left here, you can see it consumes excessive power and has a large variations of the controlled parameters. And it can also lead to vibration and acoustic noise. On the other hand, inverter control can solve this challenge. The inverter circuits inverts direct current to a suitable amount of alternating current of variable voltage and frequency. Not only can a motor rotate smoothly using inverted control, but also excessive power consumption caused by unnecessary rotation and vibration noise caused by the on-off repetitions can be reduced. Common inverted circuit incorporates of three phases, and they are called phase U, phase V, and phase W. As mentioned before, by synchronizing the on-off timings of the six transistor within the inverters, voltage and frequency of the motor can be varied. And usually PWM is used to varying this voltage and frequency. So Alan, what about controlling the speed? The simplest method is to directly drive the speed input with an analog voltage, such as a potentiometer or even from a DAC. A DC voltage you know, represents actually the maximum speed. But the most popular method is direct PWM mode. Since fast PWM duty cycle will correspond to the average voltage, a PWM signal that is fed to a motor driver will change the motor speed proportionally to the PWM signal duty cycle. Alan, what about a system that does not have the space to mount a sensor? What kind of solution should I be looking at here? Since compact or low-cost motors do not have space to put sensors, usually it requires three of them, or some harsh environment motors cannot put sensors for reliability reason. 
for example, the hall sensor, they are susceptible in high temperature. So in some applications, not having the hall sensors is actually preferred. Uh, these sensorless motors, or the basic motors call, usually detect the rotor position using you know, inductive voltage. A sensorless square wave system is composed of a controller generating control signals and an inverted circuit creating the alternating signals that we talked about earlier. A controller determines whether the rotor is rotating according to the commutation patterns based on the phase back EMF voltage, and the comparator enhances the position detection. The control signals consist of six signals, a high side and low side signal from each phase that control the gates of the high side and low side MOSFETs of the inverters. These control signals turn the MOSFETs on and off to generate the three phase voltages. The desired shape of the voltage is created by modifying the frequency, the duration, and the timing of the control signals. Finally, these phase voltages will generate the current flow through the motor phase windings, and if it is done correctly, it will result in the rotor rotation. Notice the current is square wave and not sine wave in this picture here, but square waves is susceptible by many applications. Again, I want to emphasize the sensorless square wave drive is usually for cost and for simplicity reasons. Okay, that makes sense. Now, Alan, earlier you mentioned a sensor-based sine wave system. Can you explain that a bit further? Sure. A sensor-based sine wave system is composed of a controller generating control signals and an inverter creating alternating signals like we have mentioned in the previous system. But here, it requires sensors, usually hall sensors. As I mentioned, usually three of them. A hall sensor is a semiconductor which detects a magnetic field and outputs an analog signal proportional to the magnitude of the magnetic field. The output of the hall sensor is converted into digital on-off signals and through a comparator and then used as a rotor position signal of a brushless motor. Such precision signal is deterministic at any speed level, and therefore the controller can, based on these feedback signals, do some processing and control the inverter accordingly to achieve the sine wave current as shown here. Again, I want to refresh our discussion so far. A sensor-based driving is for reliable startup, and uh, sine wave driving is to achieve optimum efficiency and lower noise. Okay, so... Alan, the last system you mentioned was sensorless field-oriented control, right? What is that system all about? Apparently, sensorless is nice, you know, without the sensors, like I mentioned, in some applications. But then sine wave drive is ideal for efficiency and noise. But these two requirements are, you know, difficult to achieve. Therefore, one of the techniques is to apply so-called a vector control which is commonly known as field-oriented control, FOC. A vector you know, has two components, magnitude and angle slash orientation. A magnetic field is a vector which needs to be controlled by both the magnitude and the orientation. And therefore, this system is called vector control and field-oriented control. And although the rotor keeps rotating, that makes it difficult to calculate the rotor position with the coordinate reference transformations, it means converting rotational axis variables into stationary axis variables. Then it becomes more manageable to control the state of currents, and therefore able to do the right push or pull of the rotor to make it rotate. On the other hand, increased efficiency requires very careful control of the Q-axis, which is proportional to the torque, and the D-axis current, which is proportional to magnetic field parameters. And typically, it requires a you know, complex control algorithm. Okay, so Alan, can we dig in even deeper and talk about some of the more advanced controls? Sure. One of the challenges is we call it lead angle control. So due to the inductive nature of the motor windings, the phase current will lag the voltage. This factor becomes more important in high speed, high efficiency applications and lead us to the concept of lead angle and lead angle control slash compensation. For highest efficiency, we want the motor current to line up with when the rotor is passing the stator that is aligned with the induced back EMF for sensorless square wave drive motor, as an example. Since it is the timing of our drive voltage, not current, that is controlled based on the motor voltage, which is the induced voltage, the current will lack the ideal timing. In order to compensate this and improve the efficiency, we want to adjust the drive voltage to lead the back EMF, such that the motor current is aligned 
we do this through the lead angle control. This can be a complex adjustment, but Toshiba Motor Control drivers have solution for this challenge. With conventional driving, the phase difference is generated depending on the rotation speed and the current value, resulting in increased power consumption. To avoid this phenomenon, a phase different lead angle adjustment will be required, but it can be fairly complex. However, with the intelligent phase control technology in some of Toshiba's motor control drivers, the phases of the motor voltage and current can be adjusted automatically. In the demo shown here on the upper right, we have a system that demonstrating a conventional fan driver versus intelligent phase control driver. And the one on the left you know, is consumed close to 16 watt at the 5,000 RPM. And the one on the right with the intelligent phase control, it consumed 8.2 watt. I mean, you can see almost a 50% reduction of the fan driving in this condition. And we also show you a few products that have this intelligent phase control in this table here. There's also a short video link here, which describes about the intelligent phase control. I encourage you to take a look at this technology there. Another technology I want to mention is, we call it as closed loop speed control. Motor speed is affected by the low. When a large low appears, the motor speed will drop, as shown on the upper left here. And when the low is lighter, the speed will increase, which may or may not be desirable for certain applications. Regulating the speed automatically under various loads require very complex closed loop design using sensors and on the front end and the MCU processing to do so. Fortunately, some of Toshiba's motor drivers feature closed loop speed control that they do not require the extra components and firmware development, and the speed is automatically regulated under various loads. The applications such as a large number of server fans within a tight environment, and these fans need to maintain certain speed for tight temperature control, and they will be benefit from such technology. And again, here are a few Toshiba motor driver that has closed loop speed control feature. Please also check there's a short video link here, which is great about the closed loop speed control. So Alan, I know from previous Chalk Talks that feel-oriented control can be quite complex. What does your solution look like and can it help with this complexity? Yes, Vector Engine Microcontroller, VEMCU, which Toshiba calls it, is an advanced motor control solution for feel-oriented control, FOC that offers sensorless sine wave drive for applications that require highest performance, such as efficiency, no noise, high torque, high speed, fast response, etc. And yet at an affordable cost. So the drawback of this uh, FOC is very complex. However, Toshiba Vector Engine MCU reduces the FOC complexity by using the Vector Engine, which is a hardware accelerator, which handles the heavy lifting FOC algorithm such as clock transforms, pot transforms, as well as many other math functions. So Vector Engine MCU not only processes FOC algorithm much faster than the pure software approach of up to 70% with an equivalent CPU core in some cases, but also it offloads the CPU core to have bandwidth handling other tasks, such as protections, communications, and many other housekeeping functions. In fact, Vector Engine MCU is a hybrid hardware and software approach that also has the flexibility to allow software customizations with the built-in schedule slash task feature. Here are just a few Toshiba Vector Engine MCU products for your reference. As you can see, actually, we already launched the fourth generation of these products. I also mentioned before FOC and also the Vector Engine MCU are more complex but we have some training videos here for your reference, so don't miss them. Okay, Alan, so if I wanna know more about your brushless motor control drivers, where should I go? Certainly, all Toshiba brushless motor control drivers, as well as other brush stepper and many others can be found in Mauser, you know, mauser.com. Excellent. Well, this has been a lot to take in today, Alan. Can you recap your main points for me? Sure, so just to summarize things, Toshiba offers over 250 motor control IC solutions. That includes 47 brushless motor control drivers and many vector engine MCUs. And the motor control drivers, most of them are fully integrated. They are great for turnkey solutions, really simplifying the tasks for the designers. And then for those who need very complex motion control, flexible, high power, we have the advanced motor control MCU, vector engine MCU for some of these very challenging applications. I also mentioned that, you know, we continue to invest 
and continue to develop new technologies in the motor control. You know, some of these technologies that I mentioned are the intelligent face control, close up speed control, and even we have our fourth generation of vector engine for FOC applications. Okay, great. Well, Alan, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Toshiba. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>